Great. So um, hi, everyone, and I welcome you to NPI and parallelization on discovery. My name is Valentine Adwaka, and I work with the high performance computing team at NMSU as a graduate student. So um, today we'll be taking a look at a couple of objectives we have for this workshop. Um, we'll take a look at introduction to uh, parallelization, and then we'll take a look at practical exercises on how we can run jobs in parallel. And then we'll um, take a look at introduction to MPI, which is a uh, message passing interface. And next, we're going to take a look at practical exercises on um, how you know MPI runs on discovery and how you could integrate MPI to your project on discovery. So with the first um, item on our objective, uh, which is introduction to parallelization, um, we'll look at the definition of parallelization and also um, the difference between um, serial versus parallel computing. And also we'll take um, a look at benefits of parallel computing as well as um, the um, application areas um, where you could apply uh, parallel computing. Oh, okay. So, um, so basically the whole idea of parallel computing is, you know, it involves having two or more processors solving a single problem, right? So you, you have a problem and um, let's say you have um, like, like a problem you want to solve or a program you want to run. And the whole idea of parallelizing that program is to have you know, let's say you submit your code to, um, what do you call it? Like, like uh, the a compute node, which then breaks your program into several processes to achieve one goal, basically. So, looking at serial versus parallel computing. So, for the serial part of it, you know, you just have um, just one CPU executing one task or solving one problem. And with a parallel, it's just you have multiple CPUs working together to solve one problem, you know. And then with the instructions, you have, you know, it just sends instructions in a sequential manner, so one at a time. But with parallel computing, you can have several instructions being received at the same time and being processed, you know, at the same time. And also when it comes to speed, um, with a serial computing, speed is kind of limited. Um, because you know one process has to finish before the other process comes in, and with parallel computing, you know there's no limitation to that as long as you have, you know, enough CPUs to carry out whatever task or processes you have to run. And then when you take take a look about um, take a look at the cost, with serial it's kind of expensive, and um, parallel computing it's less expensive. So I see the expensiveness in terms of time. You know, time is a cost um, to consider here. So on this, on this next slide, I just have, you know, a diagram that illustrates, you know, serial versus parallel computing, where you have just one task and this task, you know, broken down into um, instructions and each of these instructions are being processed by the CPU one after the other. But with the parallel computing, you have several tasks, right? And these tasks have been broken down into you know, multiple tasks and then into multiple instructions and being processed by several CPUs, you know, and also to provide the data. So a much more um, real world scenario would be um, this next diagram I have here, you know, where you have just one person at a counter. So this could be a bank or, you know, or a customer rep trying to provide services to you know different customers and as you can see with a serial example you just have you know the count um, the customer rep attending to one person one um attending to you know one person at a time but with the other diagram you have several customer reps you know attending to several customers you know at different times but at least with this you know it's more faster and you wouldn't have you know, a lot of customers waiting on the queue. So looking at the benefits, um, it saves time and money for sure. 
Um, it is used to solve large problems. Um, it makes better work of hardware and utilizes non-local resources. And with the application areas, you know, there are several areas such as search engines, um, augmented reality, finance, weather forecast, and scientific problems as well. So um, next, um, we'll take a look at a practical exercise on how you could actually parallelize programs on discovery and get your result at the same time. Um, the first example we will be looking at is, you know, running your jobs using the slum array, right? So, so I have an example here, and this is just um, the folder structure of the, the example we're going to look at. So the parent directory is a job is is called the job array directory, which contains one directory and two files. Right, so the program files are actually, um, the program files directory actually contains an input directory and an output directory. So this input directory contains, you know, what are those, what are the data we need to process? What are those information we need to process, you know, by um, the discovery? And the output directory would contain the results of the process data, right? So, um, basically, if you're trying to run a program on discovery, you know, you 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 definitely need to have your program, you know, you want to run, and the slum or the bash script, you know, which is which is a slum script, which you know sched, um, schedules your job and also allocates resources to your job. So the script of SH is a slum script, and the program um, is the the you know maybe your your Python code or your C code or your Java code you want to run, right? Okay, so this this next slide, um, I, I explained this already. So I'm just going to jump into the um, code explanation. So, so basically this is our regular slum script. You know, we have the name of our, first we have um, the shebang command um, which actually tells the shell that um, the script we're about to run is a shell script, right? And then we have the resource request section, which contains our um, slum directives, like the sbatch commands and flags. So we have our job name, the output, the time. And then here, this is the unique elements we have here. So here we have the array. So this actually specifies you know, what are those, what are the number of programs or the number of tasks you need to carry out in a parallel manner? So that's what we have here. So, you know, by merely looking at this, we know that we have, you know, four tasks and this is the format. This is how you should assign this in your Sloan script. And then we also want to assign one CPU per, you know, the task we have specified here. And then each of these um, CPUs are actually going to utilize um, one gig of RAM. So this section here, um, which is my job step section, basically I am trying to inform, you know, the user that, hey, um, you know, for each task, I need I needed to know what, um, I needed to know the task IDs for every task that is being processed at that time. So that's what this, you know, explains. And then, this right here is just the environmental variable. So Slum has several environment, environmental variables you can you know, look up and use in your code. So the last job step I have here, basically I'm executing this program, right? And I'm passing um, input, my input files, you know, which is the data I have in those files, right? So for instance, I have input one, input two, input three, and input four. So whenever it gets to, you know, the task numbers, you know, I'm automatically picking those input files. And then after it is being processed, I am sending the output to the same part, you know, so I'm sending the output to, you know, output one, two, three, you know, and four respectively, if that makes sense. So um, I'm gonna show you like, we're going to do a practice section on that so you can see how it works. 
So this is my program. This is a program I like to run, right? So this is a program that takes the input files, processes it, and then sends out the output, right? So basically I am passing, I'm taking it, the file as an argument here. So that's what this line does. And then I've assigned a value to my variable called multiplier. So what this code is doing is it loops through all the files that I have to process and it multiplies the content of those files by five. Well, before it does that, it sleeps for like 60 seconds um, before it multiplies the content of those files I am passing in. So the reason why I put the sleep there is just for us, you know, for the program to take, you know, more time for us to see, you know, the, the for us to see it in the queue and be able to tell that, okay, this program is actually processing kind of. So, um, this is what an input file look, looks like. So I'm just, you know, concatenating the entire input files. I'm reading everything at once. That's what this command does. So um, the first input, the input one file reads 100, second one, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. So these are the contents of each of those files, right? And so after I run this job, when you do an SQ while the job is running, you would see the job ID in this format, right? So remember we specified the RE um, directive in the Slum script. So this actually tells you that, hey, we have same job ID for all these um, tasks that you're about to run. But, you know, as you can see, you can tell that the tasks, you know, where um, the tasks, it, it doesn't display in a, you know, in a sequential manner. You know, you can tell that this was executed at random. So you have two, three, four, and one, you know, and they all processed, they finished at the same time, they took the same time to process, and they all ran on the same um, node, okay? So basically the, the, the line, the number you see here, you know, the, within the blue um, border, is actually the array tasks, you know, that will run in parallel. And then this within the red border is, you know, the job ID. So at the end of the day, this is the result I got, you know, so remember in our program, we have a multiplier that has the value five. So this value five is being multiplied by each of the input files to produce this output. Okay, so um, I'm gonna switch to the code so we can see it in action. Okay, go clear. And clear all the out. Okay. 
So this is our program, the program we want to run. Just the same thing we have on the slide. And then our batch script. Script and SH. Um, so we have this array we have assigned here, just like we have um, on a on a slide. So I'm going to clear the console and then let's see the program files. So the program files we have the input and output directory, right? So when we take a look at the input directory, we can see four different files. Right, and each of these files. So if I do, okay, so let me do a CD here. Okay, if I do a tat on input one, input one just contains a value 100, and input two contains 1000, and so on, right? So I'm going to exit from here and go to CD output. All right, so I'm going to clear the output files here. I'm just going to delete everything because we're going to run the program again to see how it works. Okay, so right now I have no output. Oh. Hold on. Um, LQ. Oh, my bad. Okay, so right now I have no LQ. So I'll go back and then I'm going to do an S batch. I'm going to submit my script. Okay, if I do an SQ. Okay, so now we can see the job I submitted here. So this is a job ID. Right, and then it, you know, you could tell that I have four different tests that are running in parallel, you know, and this is submitted by me, obviously. And let me do a watch command on this SQ. Okay, so my job is currently has been allocated resources and it's running on discovery C1, right? And it's still running. But here you can tell that, you know, the whole idea of this is if you have multiple programs that you want to run at the same time, you know, you could use this method to, you know, allocate, to, you know, to assign several jobs to several tasks and get the, the output at the same time, you know, rather than, you know, submitting multiple jobs. Okay, so my job is complete. I'm going to exit and control C, clear up my console. And then now we can view the output of this file. So if I go to CD program files, output, and do an LS, now we can see um, the result of um, the program we just ran. So if I do a cut output all, it shows the processed results. So this is the whole um, idea of how you can run jobs using arrays and slurm. Um, do you have any questions? Any questions so far? Anything confusing? Um, so right now you're running the four import files. So there, the four import files are uh, separately uh, job or they're the same job okay so so right now you know i have i am processing four different data at the same time right so remember we have the input directory so this is where the data i am trying to process leaves right so if i do an ls input we can see it so the data you know, is contained in the different files, right? Different input files. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, now I'm trying to see how best I can 
process each of the data in those files at the same time. You know, and the best way we can do that, you know, given a scenario like this, is to use the SLOM array to achieve that, if that makes sense. So um, let me go back and script.sh. Okay, so cat script on SH. So, um, so this is the, this is the whole idea, right? I have, remember, I have my. Let me show. Let me show the output of the program itself. So remember, I have my main program, right? This is my main program. You know, and this program receives an argument, right? It collects, um, it reads, you know, data from files that you pass to it. Now, this this is the main thing that processes. This is the main thing that processes my my data. But with a slum script, which st which starts from here to here, right? The slum scripts, you know only reads it, it knows the amount of tasks you have to you know perform because you specify that hey i have four different files that i have to process right and i would like these files to be processed in a parallel manner right so that's what you told slum here so now that you specified okay you have four different tasks then you know this is a place where we execute um the, the, the programs, you know, and then when we pass, we pass this as an argument to this program, you know, so what we're doing is we're fetching each of these tasks. So we fetch task one, task ID two, task ID three, task ID four, and the program picks each of these tasks and then sends the output of each of them to the output directory, but it, 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 processes, it processes it at the same time. Was that clear enough? Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay you're welcome. Okay, so um, so let's let's take a look at a second example. Maybe this would make you know more sense or become more clearer. So um, I have um, a parent directory called jobs parallel, and then I have my um, batch file, my, my slum file, and then a Python program, right? And then let's keep this. Okay, so basically, um, so basically the Python program is a serial program, right? That takes one parameter, you know, which is a job number, you know, it prints the job number and host name on startup and the job number again, once it finishes. So um, it's just a simple Python script. So it's just a simple Python script, um, which shows you know, the different tasks that are being run on um, the host. And then for my batch script, same thing, I have loaded my Python modules. After specifying my resource request, you know, I have three tasks to run. And, you know, I'm assign, assigning one CPU per task and also um, one, gig of RAM for to each CPU. And here I am loading my, you know, dependency, which is Python because I'm running a Python program. So over here, I'm trying to execute my job in parallel, right? So with the S run command, we make sure that each of these tasks are being executed by the compute nodes in a parallel manner. So based on the fact that I am passing several different arguments to my Python code, Right, and I want to run these in parallel. So 
over here, I have broken it down into three, you know, because I'm passing three arguments. And I want to make sure that each of these S run execution are handling, you know, one argument as one, as one task. So each of these are being processed by several CPUs. So in total, we're going to have three CPUs processing these jobs or, or this, um, this job steps section you have here. Okay. So, um, so at the end of the day, after the program ran, this is what we got. We had three, um, we had, so this is the statistics. You use it as ACCT to show the statistics of the job you ran. And here you can see the job ID, right? So looking at this part, you have, remember we had three job steps, right? We had three SRUN commands executing several arguments, you know, And um, so each of these um, what job steps were executed using one CPU each. So that's what the total allocated CPU is three. But when it came to you know the SRON commands, it ensured that you know each of those SRON commands were executed using one CPU. Right. So at the end of the day. We check the results of our output, and then you can tell that you know this actually ran on different nodes, right? So it, you know, the code set starting job two on discovery nine, C nine, C ten, and C eleven, you know, and you could tell that this actually was processed in a parallel manner because you know the because of the way the number is presented, you know, it's not even in order. Okay, so let me let me let me give an example. Let me show an example real quick. CD jobs parallel. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna remove all my out files. Yeah, so I have the same Python code and I have the same as batch code. All right, so if I do an as batch on script.sh and I do a watch sq, okay, so my program has been allocated to discovery C6, right, and it's done. So I'm gonna exit, clear up my console, and then, so let's check the output of this program. Okay, so, so basically it started, you know, the first, it started the first job, processed one, it processed one first, process the second, um, the zero argument for second, and then the, the, the number two was the last one that was processed. Let me show this. So remember we have, we have three arguments. So zero, one, and two, right? And each of these were actually processed, you know, using one CPU each. So, you know, it started with one, which is this. Next, it started with two, and finally, it processed um, this, which is a two. And if I do an, uh, if I do a sect, a sect command. Okay, so this is the last job we ran. You know, which is a Python job. Right, and you know it used a total of three CPUs, 
and each of these job steps were processed with one CPU each. Okay, so was that was that clear enough? Any questions? Okay. So moving on to MPI. Um, so basically we'll take a look at the definition of MPI and then we'll look at the differences between MPI and OpenMP and also benefits of MPI. So um, MPI is basically, um, you know, it, it's more like having how, you know, how well you can make processes communicate with each other. So you have a task distributed um, to several processes and each of these processes running those tasks are actually you know, communicating, right? So it allows programs to span multiple compute nodes. You know, and um, let me see. And it sits between the, the network and application. So um, we have several MPI flavors. So you have the MPI, which is the standard, which stands for message person library or interface. And then the open MPI is just an open source, you know, implementation of MPI. And then the open MP is more like a compiler add on to the um, entire MPI framework. And then you have other implementations of MPI, such as MPI CH, um, you have Intel MPI, and you have um, MV API CH. So those are just, I, I guess those are more like proprietary um, MPI flavors. So looking at the benefits of MPI, we have a thread-based parallelism, you know, where you can parallelize your code to be run across several threads. And these threads are kind of thread safe in such a way that, you know, whatever communication or whatever task they are handling, you know, it handles it in a self safe way, in, in a safe, you know, in a safe manner, devoid of any um, interruptions. So, um, also, it uses fast available interconnection, you know, better performance on large shared memory nodes, and it is portable and easy to use. And there's no need to recompile your program on every cluster because MPI kind of distributes a copy of the program to all the, the entire processes that are, going to, that are going to be used to run that job. So the example we'd look at is, you know, how we're going to run multi-process jobs with MPI using a C program, right? So here I have my batch. Um, so here I have my batch script. I've specified my job name, um, the output of my job, the time, the total tasks I have to run, my the CPUs per task, and the memory per CPU, right? And oh, sorry. So here I'm loading my dependency, which is the MPI program, like the MPI module, right? And then here I am using the MPI um, compiler to compile my C code. And finally, I have the Estron command and the number of tasks I have to run, which is equivalent to the number of tasks I've specified up here. And then this flag is necessary if you're running an MPI program, um, just to ensure that you know whatever um, whatever you're trying to run is executed, you know, using the MPI um, framework. And then finally, I am executing um, my program. So that's this final call you have here, right? So the next code I have is the C code, right? So basically what is C code does is, you know, it actually, it, it's just a way of showing, you know, the different processes, 
you know, how your work has been distributed across different processes. So you, it's, it's left for you for the, it's left for you the programmer to determine, you know, what what kind of work you want to assign to each of these processes, right? Because these processes actually communicate with each other. So it's just like you have a master and a worker node, right? You have a master thread or a master CPU and a worker CPUs. So at the end of the day, the master CPU distributes um, tasks across to all other worker CPUs. And, at, um, and once they are done processing whatever operations they have to process, they relay the results of those tasks to the master CPU. So the master CPU then collates that information and then sends the output to you, um, the user. So, I mean, basically that's what this, I, um, that's the idea of this code we have here, just to show you the different ranks, you know, the different processes, you know, whenever you use an MPI. So after this code was run, we had this output result, which showed um, which showed us the different processes, you know, so these, these are more like ranks and, you know, the cluster or the compute node that was responsible for executing that process. And this just shows the total number of CPUs that was used to, you know, process that, that job or that task. So I'm gonna switch to the code. Okay, so this is my MPI. This is my batch script. All right, so I have three tasks to run. Um, I'm compiling my code here. I've loaded my MPI module. I've assigned 100 mega, um, megabytes um, per CPU, and I'm allocating one CPU per task for 30 minutes. Okay, and um, we have the same C code. Um, let's, let's see what we have, okay. Cat MPI. Yeah, just same C code as the one we have on the slide. So I'm gonna clear up my console and submit this job. Okay, SQ. Okay, my job is still waiting for resources to be allocated. I'm gonna run an SQ again. Still waiting. Okay, so my job now is running on Discovery C7. So let's just wait for it to run. Taking so much time. Okay, completing. Okay. So I'm guessing it took time because of the amount of memory I assigned to it. So let me just view the RP and see. Let's see if I do a pat MPI job. Okay, so we had an error in my C code, but that's fine. Well, at the end of the day, we got us outputs, you know, different processes run on the same cluster, and then the total number of processes we ran, you know, it's you know, we had three CPUs per, um, you know, allocates on one CPU per process. So I'm gonna experiment something real quick, just to check and be sure. Oops.
watch. Oh, it's done. Okay, so yeah. So if I do pets. So my machine is kind of is kind of running so slow because of the amount, amount of things I have running. Yeah, so we have same results, but this time it executed faster because we allocated more um, RAM to it. So, um, and that that's it for the MPI. Yeah, so do you have any questions so far? So, uh, I have a question about the M MPI. So, yeah. It said the definition said uh, it uh, will com uh, compute on the multiple uh, compute computational nodes, right? You mean the definition of MPI? Yeah. So it, MPI. It Go said ahead. Uh, it will uh, run on the multiple uh, nodes, right? Yes. So so MPI is basically a way of, you know, distributing tasks. You know, so let's say you have a Python code, right? And you have a section that, you know, you have several sections that you would like to run in parallel. Mm -hmm. So you could use the MPI library for that. So the MPI, what it does is, you know, it's a message passing interface. So it just ensures that whatever task you want to distribute across, you know, several CPUs, it makes sure that, you know, those CPUs handling those tasks handle it in a way where, so let's say for instance, if you assign, um, so let's say for instance, you have a value, um, a whole value called, um, let's say 10 for instance, and you have, you've assigned three CPUs. So I am one of those CPUs. Chidambaram is also one CPU, right? Mm -hmm. So if you give us the, the value 10 to, process it and then you know send the result back to you so you are the master cpu so now you you out of the 10 you've assigned four to yourself or let's say you've assigned six to yourself you've assigned two to me you've assigned two to chinamara so we are all cpus right so now i have processed i have the value two which i need to process so if i process two let's say i multiply two by four and i get a value six Chindambara multiplies two by eight and he gets the value 16. He's going to return the outputs to you and I'm going to return the outputs to you and then you would collate that result and send the output to the user, if that makes sense. So it's a way of, you know, it's a message passing interface. You know, it just ensures that, you know, work is distributed to all other um, nodes, and, oh, sorry, all other processes and those results are being passed back to the you know, master process in order to I, produce the results. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you said about the distribution of the different tasks. Uh, what I'm asking is about the node. Is there any, so uh, on the discover, uh, is, does the one node contains multiple CPU or only uh, one CPU for one node? No, 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 the one node contains multiple CPUs. So, so you can so, have. Yeah. So if if I assign assign a task to the multiple CPU, can the most uh, can uh, that the multiple CPU can uh, be on different nodes? Yes, you can spread okay. it across different nodes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, I mean, I mean, that's the essence of MPI, right? So you spread it across multiple CPUs, across multiple nodes, and at the end of the day, you still get, you know, that accurate result you're looking for. Okay, so uh, if I if I don't use the MPI, but I do just use a, a job array, uh, like you explained in the, uh, in the beginning, so then the CPU should be on the one node, right? Or... No, no, you, 
you, you don't even need to, you, you don't need to bother about the number of nodes you assign to your work. All you need, all you need to be concerned about is the amount of CPUs you're assigning to your job. And then if it happens that, you know, um, slum or your, your, your job requires more CPUs and it requires to borrow CPUs from other nodes, slum is just going to automatically, you know, add other CPUs from other nodes to your job. So, um, the difference, so actually the difference between the, the arrays, for me, the way I see the arrays is a way of, let's say you have multiple arguments for one Python program, right? Mm -hmm. for, you, for one Python program, you wanna pass multiple arguments to that Python program. You can use the array methodology to handle that, okay. right? But if your code, has a form of parallel implementation you know let's say you have a python code that you know has some form of parallel implementation like using mpi then you can use mpi to run you know to execute that code on discovery i really haven't worked with um you know like mpi in an extensive manner you know i just like ran the basics of mpi and that's what i know so far Okay. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think. Okay. Great. Thank you.